My office will seek a speedy trial so that our evidence can be tested in court and judged by a jury of citizens. This is an attack on free speech and political advocacy. Former President Donald Trump has received a historic third criminal indictment, this time for his alleged attempts to stay in office after the 2020 election. We're here because we want to make San Diego safer and more secure for everyone. The city of San Diego is giving the use of smart street lights and automated license plate readers the green light. And more parents are using air tags to track kids too young to have a phone. But is this going overboard? Experts are weighing in. We start off today with cloud cover along the coastline. Plus side for this afternoon is that humidity values are dropping down, but we've got another hot weekend to contend with. We'll cover it all in your forecast coming up. You're up at 6 a.m. with CBS 8. Thank you so much for joining us. It is 6 a.m. I'm Carrie Lane in for Eric Connor and I'm Dana Marie McNichol filling in for Netta Arampour. So we have some breaking news that we want to get right to this coming out this morning out of Claremont. There has been a shooting near Mesa College on Mesa College Drive. This happened just after 2 a.m. That's all we can confirm, at least as of right this moment. We do have Chris Grow and others on their way to the scene to gather information and bring it to us as soon as they arrive. So obviously, once they get there, we will bring you the very latest. Then I do want to mention we have just a sad piece of confirmation and news to share with you that a canine canine on scene was shot and killed uh, just confirmed into our newsroom right now again uh, a canine shot and killed so of course we are gathering more information on what led up to this stick with us as we bring you the latest we do want to move on to a, uh, a person killed in a car crash in Bay Terrace. It happened last night. Police were called just before 930 to South Woodman Avenue and Jamie Street. Police say a Kia tried to turn onto Woodman without yielding with the right of way. Also crashed into a Honda driving the opposite direction. One of those two passengers in the Honda was ejected from the car and pronounced dead on the scene. The other passengers were taken to the hospital with non life threatening injuries. Both passengers were not wearing seatbelts. Police say all other involved suffered minor injuries. This morning, former President Donald Trump is facing more criminal charges. Now, this is his third criminal indictment. Trump is accused of trying to stay in office after the 2020 election. CBS's Astrid Martinez has the latest on those charges as well as reaction. Former President Donald Trump has been asked to appear in a Washington, D.C. federal court Thursday after a grand jury indicted him on four charges, all related to alleged efforts to hold on to power after he lost the 2020 presidential election. My office will seek a speedy trial so that our evidence can be tested in court and judged by a jury of citizens. The former president has repeatedly denied wrongdoing and is accusing special counsel Jack Smith of trying to interfere with the 2024 election. This is an attack on free speech and political advocacy. Sources tell CBS News Trump is at his New Jersey golf course and he is mapping out a strategy with his legal defense to shift blame to lawyers that advised him after the 2020 election. A lawyer for conservative attorney John Eastman, who advised Trump at the time, said in a statement that the indictment, quote, relies on misleading presentation of the record and adds if Dr. Eastman is indicted, he will go to trial. Trump's former vice president turned 2024 rival Mike Pence said in a statement the indictment serves as an important reminder. Anyone who puts himself over the Constitution should never be president of the United States. All right, and that breaking news that we were just talking about coming out of Claremont this morning, we do have a crew on scene with the latest. There has been a shooting near Mesa College on Mesa College Drive. CBS 8's Chris Grow, he just got to the scene. Now, Chris, what can you tell us? We know that a canine was shot and killed. Yeah, good morning, Carrie, Dana Marie, and, and I, we did learn that that canine was shot and killed. That uh, confirmed by the San Diego Police Officers Association. I want to show you the scene right now. That white Tesla still here on the Mesa College property. We're still trying to gather a lot of information. We're still trying to confirm some of the reports that we've been hearing, but what we can confirm to you right now, and I want to quote directly from the San Diego Police Officers Association's Twitter account. They said, quote, a violent shooting suspect killed one of our canine dogs this morning. Our dog saved the lives of the officers and citizens in the area. They, they said rest in peace. The, they also said that the suspect is no longer a threat and that the officers and innocent victims of the shooting 
are uninjured. So again, we're still trying to gather the details surrounding this circumstance. If officers open fire on the suspect as well too, what the status is of that suspect. What we do know is that that white Tesla is a center of attention right now for this investigation. So as we continue to gather details, we understand that if a police officer with the San Diego Police Department did open fire, it would be the Sheriff's Department who would handle the investigation because of the joint agreement that is in place. So we could have to wait until we hear from a San Diego County Sheriff's investigator. We're still waiting to see exactly what we may be able to learn here on scene. But what we understand uh, from what we also saw with our own eyes, there could potentially be multiple scenes here, not just what's happening on Mesa College. Uh, we also saw just over on Bench Street, uh, another group of officers that had a, a small section of that neighborhood closed off for those of you that are familiar with the Claremont area. So as we continue to gather information, we'll continue to check in here on CBS8.com, but also continue to check in with you on CBS8, uh, our social media channels and here right live on air. Dana Marie and Carrie. All right, Chris, we will check back in with you as the news warrants. Meantime, an update this morning. The Sheriff's Department says efforts are underway to recover the body of a missing hiker that was found on El Cajon Mountain. We're told the 34 year old man went for a hike yesterday. He never made it back and was found dead this morning near a trail. Right now, neither his identity or the official cause of death have so far been released. And this morning, the San Diego Unified School District Police is expected to announce a lawsuit against the district. The lawsuit names the district's police chief, Alfonso Contreras, his subordinate, S uh, Sergeant Jenny Gruner, and the district superintendent. Nine officers say that Chief Contreras and Sergeant Jenny Gruner are in a relationship, and it has been known to the department members for quite some time now. They allege the chief used his power to push the sergeant's growth within the department and to cover up illegal and wrongful behavior made by the sergeant. The lawsuit alleges that the relationship created a toxic and hostile work environment for those who did not support the sergeant. SDUSD, they have not commented yet on the lawsuit. We do have an update for you this morning. The city of San Diego is giving the use of smart street lights and automated license plate readers the green light. Now the city council vote does not implement the technologies, but it does open up the possibilities that the San Diego Police Department can use them for investigations. Now to use this technology, the department will have to go through an approval process. Yesterday, city council meeting included nearly two hours of public comment with dozens of people speaking out against this technology. I am against the street lights because they're going to impact black, brown and poor communities far more than they're going to impact um, white communities or wealthy communities. No word when the cameras will be installed. Head to CBSA.com to check out the proposed locations for the street lights. Yesterday we brought you a story of a complete overhaul on the San Diego ambulance services and this morning we are learning that Falk and American Medical Response will continue to support patients, but the companies are handing over control of things like staffing, dispatch and billing. Under the newly approved Alliance model, the city will collect ambulance transport fees. The cities and fire departments and counties are eligible under a new state law to receive a much higher rate for Medi-Cal patients than uh, the conventional provider like Falk or a contracted provider. The city can collect more money when it's in charge of billing than a private ambulance company can't collect. Now the account for inflation and growing costs of fuel, the ambulance transport fees in San Diego will increase 5% in 2024, 7% in 2025. And CBS 8 Schools Out Hunger's Not Summer Food Drive is in full swing. Yes, it is. And today we're hosting a day to donate drive through food drive. CBS 8's Abby Black is live at the Vons on Murphy Canyon Road to show us how we can all be a part of this. Hi, Abby. Hello, good morning. I am in the best spot you could be. We are here in the Vons parking lot in Murphy Canyon, and this is where you can help out. Schools out, hunger's not. That means that there are children that are out in the summer and they're not in school getting that free meal that they often rely on. And this is where you can help. You can get those non-perishable items. You can buy them inside the store if you have any in your, in your cupboards as well. Come on down here and donate. And this is also the kickoff to the day where, the, where you can buy a $5 bag full of food that will help a child and a family. But live with us this morning to kind of give us a better understanding of how important this is, is Courtney Carranza with Vons Albertsons. Courtney, 
How amazing is it to be a partner and to, to want to help children this summer? It is just so amazing. Bonds and Albertsons is so honored to work with the Jacob and Cushman San Diego Food Bank to have these hunger bags readily available in our stores. They are only $5 super easy to purchase at checkout and it has the supplemental items that our families need this summer in our communities. Well Courtney I love it. I look forward to it every year when the cashier says school's out hunger's not would you like to buy a five dollar bag and I say of course because that five dollars can go a long way for a family. It certainly can. There's items, there's protein items like peanut butter and tuna, vegetables, um, pasta items. So it really helps supplement that family's needs that they have when they are not getting the breakfast and lunch items at the schools right now being out. Thank you, Courtney. And CBS 8 is a proud partner. And another partner is SDG&E. They have been here donating as well to help with those children in need and live with us here in the parking lot again you guys can come on down live with us is kazim with sd genie kazim you guys have done so much for the, the the food bank yes uh we just recently provided the food bank part of our committee assistance fund three hundred thousand dollars towards food nutrition and food insecurity and really knowing the challenges that families are facing this summer um, this food drive in coordination and in conjunction with our work with the food bank we're proud to support and really help this community thrive because when we know that children are out during the summer, that means that maybe they may be missing a meal. And that $5, that $300,000 at STG, that can go such a long way. It goes a very, very long way. You know, the statistics are very staggering. One in four people in San Diego County are experiencing uh, food insecurity. And of that population, one in three are children. And so with this food program, it allows for families to really help alleviate those challenges that they face on a day-to-day -day basis here in San Diego. Thank you so much, Kazim. And we want to show you, this is where you can come down here to the parking lot and the Vons at Murphy Canyon. We want to show you these famous red barrels that you're going to see also at your local Vons and Albertson store. We want to fill these barrels up. So please come on down, say hello, fill these barrels up with those non-perishable items such as peanut butter, pasta. These are all foods that can help supplement a meal and really stretch that dollar and stretch those meals during the week that families need so desperately. You can also learn to donate. I forgot. I want to also tell you that if you can't come down here to donate your food, you can also uh, donate at the cashier. Again, you can buy the $5 virtual bag or you can just donate your money. We have that QR code on your screen right now. Take a picture of it and that's all the different ways we'll show you on how you can donate to help schools out hungers not. It truly takes a village. Absolutely, mm -hmm. especially when yes. one in three children are food insecure in San Diego County. So, Abby, thank you so much for sharing all of that information with us. It's so important. And just again, $5 is not a lot. It's the cost of a Starbucks drink, and it really makes an impact on our students. So. Sure does. Important information. We'll check back in soon. Well, a special treat for stargazers right now in the sky. People can see a super moon. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Viewers actually sent in some photos of last night's skies and this morning as well. It's called the Sturgeon Moon, and that's because the giant sturgeon of the Great Lakes and Lake Champlain were most readily caught during this part of summer. While it's beautiful to look at in the sky, the Sturgeon Moon is actually having an effect down here on Earth. Its gravitational pull is leading to flooding in some of those areas, including Bayside of Mission Beach. If you missed the supermoon, do not worry. The second supermoon of this month is the blue moon. You'll be able to see that on August 30th, and hopefully the skies will cooperate a little better, but at least we have some lovely photos for those of you that were stuck with the fog this morning and unable to <laughs> see it. Okay, so we want to see what the moon looks like from where you are. If you can see it, you can always send us photos on the CBS 8 app. Just click on the Near Me section. Your photos could be shown right here on CBS 8. So load them and we'll show them. Just like Evan. Evan loves all these viewer photos. It's helpful to kind of get views from different perspectives, right. I should say, around the county. There are eyes and ears outside mm -hmm. our viewers. So, yeah, I mean, we had several photos of this super moon. It's been beautiful. But then yeah. on just any average day, people will send photos of the clouds and just things that they see out there. So it's great. I was going to say the sunrise behind you. The clouds beautiful. are actually adding and making for a more dramatic it's, sunrise. It's beautiful. We've yeah. had some beautiful sunrises. Yesterday's was gorgeous. This one also gorgeous. Uh, we are in many cases, or at least if you're close to the coast or inland below the clouds, 
clouds. So this is a view from above the clouds kind of showcases what we're in for as the afternoon comes about. I'm looking at our Mount Soledad camera, not quite as sunny out there, still socked in quite a bit. So if you are under that marine layer of clouds, well, you're going to have to wait a bit for the sun to peek through. However, we do expect that the afternoon conditions will be mostly sunny. Temperatures will be very mild, close to the coast, upper 70s, make our way into the upper 80s inland. So it'll be quite hot for the inland valleys, mountains and deserts. One thing that we have on our side for today is we will have less humidity to work with, so it won't be quite as humid. It will be a little bit drier. Humidity values dropping down from about 50% where they were Monday all the way down to about 25% today, so knocked down by about half. Uh, we are, will, are watching as those clouds pull back, so you can see that on satellite radar. You can also see off toward the eastern half of the screen a little bit of green that has popped up. These are just little specks of green, mainly indicating that we are now transitioning away from that morning opportunity for some showers, maybe a thunderstorm or two that's leaving us toward the northeast of us. And we're instead just left with that cloud cover close to the coastline. There's the showers up around the Vegas area bringing plenty of a uh, thunderstorm potential to the state of Nevada. Another live look outside from San Miguel. We earlier saw that moon in full force, but now it's just going down. Moon is just starting to set. Uh, it will still have plenty of light with it into the next couple nights and mornings. Uh, just keep in mind, we'll slowly start to see uh, us lose that light attached to it. Sunrise was at 603, so just about 13 minutes ago. Sunset's not coming until 746. And again, that humidity value now dropping down this afternoon. Let's take a look at what your uh, wait times are right now at the San Ysidro Port of Entry and the Otay Mesa Port of Entry. San Ysidro, it will be 115 minutes, nearly two hours. Otay Mesa Port of Entry, about 75 minutes, so about an hour 15 is what you're looking at. Uh, head to cbs8.com slash traffic. It'll give you the latest on what to expect on our highways as you get into San Diego County. Back to you. Still ahead, why the Republican National Committee is planning to impose stricter rules for presidential candidates to make the second debate. And a powerful typhoon slams into Japan overnight. We're going to take a look at the damage that was left behind. But as we go to break, the average price for a regular gallon of gas in San Diego County is now $5.10. Last week, it was $4.98.